Hello everybody, it's Jennifer Lahan with Lahan Home Team and here with your monthly market update. This is for July, so we're going to cover right up until June and see how the market's looking. I'm going to try to be as brief as I can, but yet informative for you. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, well, we have a little quote this month I wanted to share, and it says that this month's overall home buyer demand rating equaled 86 on a 0 to 100 scale, down from 88 last month, and marking the first sequential decline since November. So we're starting to find what we're calling buyer fatigue. And I'm gonna go over that in a little bit, but here's a percent of respondents who say it's a good time to buy. Now, if you look last June, you had 61% saying that they felt it was a good time to buy. Now let's go to May of this year, and it went down to 35%. Again, what we're finding is buyers are literally just getting tired of the competition, having to bid over bidding price and competing with a lot of other buyers. And a lot of people are starting to hold off. So here's the realities of buyer fatigue, which I just mentioned about. One, we've got record price appreciation. So prices have been going up considerably over the last year. We also have extremely low inventory. So you have a lot of buyers, not enough homes that creates a lot of competition. You've got record high sales going over list price. In other words, if a house say has been listed at 320, it might actually end up selling at 340, some even more depending on where you are in the United States. And then we also have record low days on the market. So a home might be on the market literally for a weekend and it's already pending because it got enough bids and offers. And then we also have historically low mortgage rates. Again, that brings out more buyers. When the mortgage rates are low, you're gonna find more buyers because now you can afford more than you could say when the mortgage rate was a lot higher. Even at four and a half percent, you still can't afford as much as say three and a half percent. So let's look at the months of inventory of homes for sale. Now this is taking you all the way back from 1999 up to today. You know, we always switch, right? We have years where we're in a seller's market and years where we're in a buyer's market. And for quite a while, we were in a buyer's market. Now we're clearly in a seller's market. We've been for a while, but it's been a big time seller's market right now because of the low inventory that we're having. And now let's talk about American home equity. That skyrocketed over the last year. Right now, the average gain in equity of mortgaged homes is $33,400. You also have 216,000 current average equity of mortgaged homes, and then 38.2% of all homes are just owned free and clear, and 19.6% is an increase in equity, which is totaling over 1.9 trillion. So here's a few quotes to talk about what we're kind of looking at. So it looks like existing inventory is starting to inch up, which is good news for a housing market, parts for more supply. Also, we're seeing another significant week over week gain in inventory. This is great news for those of you who are buyers. And I will tell you when we get to the Orlando part, we are also seeing an inch a gain in inventory. Uh, supply is expected to improve, which will give buyers more options and help tamp down record high asking prices for existing homes. So if you are that buyer who's kind of gotten fatigued with the whole market, it is starting to look a little bit better for you. And I'm hoping down the road, maybe fall, we're going to see more of an increase. Here's some inventory levels just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. Back in January, about 870,000 homes listed. That's your inventory. Now, it's still kind of low even now, but if you look at May, we have gone up a lot since January. This is good news. And if it keeps going up, this is going to help a lot of buyers out there. So you'll have maybe not so harsh competition that you have right now. All right, the improvement we saw in new listings growth from May to June shows sellers are entering the market historically later in the season, which could mean we'll see home buying continue into the fall as buyers jump at new opportunities. So yeah, a lot of times summer is our like hot time, right? We've got all this homes on the market, but they're starting now. I, I'm even this month in July, we're seeing more homes. So I'm thinking this is going to look like a maybe a good fall. Let's look at a forecast, the second half of 2021. We're already entering, we're getting ready for that, right? So home price forecast, we've talked about this. There really hasn't been too much of a shift. Basically, this is your breakdown of the different companies, some of the major companies that are giving you their forecast for home prices. Um, and basically, if you take the average of them all, we're looking at about 8.9% average. So 
not too bad. I think, well, I'm going to get into a couple more slides and you'll see where the forecast is that we're going to eventually slow down. Here's the percent of mortgages in forbearances. They are also decreasing. Let's go back to last May. That's in red. May and June of last year, so 2020. You had quite a few homes that were in forbearance. Now go up to this past May and June of 2021, and you can see we've had a sharp decline, about half um, that we've had that are not in forbearance anymore. So it's looking good. It really is out there. Let's look at the month over month change in housing inventory. So I was just talking about how we are starting to see an increase in inventory. Unless you're in Hawaii, um, not so great, or Rhode Island. But the other states are starting to look good. Even Florida, it's a slight increase, but it's better than it was. Um, you've got some states that are seeing a really good increase, such as Pennsylvania, um, Montana. Those are seeing good increases in inventory. So not bad. The Atlantic says that the only places where McBride told me he could envision a bubble bursting, because there have been talks about, is this a bubble? And this is what the answer is. Are locations where urban residents bought second homes in a panic, only to have the urban core quickly get vaccinated and then normalize in 2021? So we might see some price declines in the second home areas, like small towns in New England and other beach towns on the East Coast. But even there, we just might see a shift where more people decide that they like owning second homes. So that's one of the things that they were talking about. And just to kind of show you um, a graphic of that, here's where the second home market had surged. And basically, you can see the colors. In 2019, that's your blue. And we had just 4% and then 2% for second homes and 2% for investment properties. But if you look at 2020, you had a huge surge in people wanting to buy second homes, 27%. That's a big surge compared to 2019. And if you look at investment properties, we actually had a decline with that one. What about home sales forecast? Well, they're forecast to increase nicely in 2021 and to do well in 2022. You're looking at Fannie Mae, which is in green, Freddie Mac, which is in orange, and MBA in blue. And you can see in 2021, they're very close to each other with their forecast. I'll kind of show you right here with my cursor. And then 2022, this is the current forecast. JP Morgan says that home buyers, interest rates are still historically low, though they are inching up. And I will tell you that because we, uh, Brett and I are buying a house right now and it took eight months for it to build. Uh, it's almost done. But we had a much lower rate eight months ago and now we're locking in at a little higher rate, but it's still a good rate. Um, housing prices have spiked during the last six to nine months, but we don't expect them to fall soon. And we believe they are more likely to keep rising. If you're looking to purchase a new home, conditions now may be better than 12 months hence. Here's the forecast for housing. Appreciation will begin to return to historical norms. Look at 2021. We just talked about uh, the estimated price appreciation, about 8.66%, a little high. But if you notice next year and continue on, it's still projected that home prices will appreciate, but notice it's going to slow down to more normal levels. So that's good news. What about sales? All right, average days on the market, still very quick, and I was just talking about that. In the United States, the average days on the market is about 17 days, just about every state. You can see maybe just a few states that are in the darker blue. Uh, those are even quicker. Uh, but the majority is 17 days. That's your average and existing home sales. The Midwest, you can see that's the lowest, and the West is still doing very well, and it was doing very well, I think, every month of this year. Um, overall in the U.S., we've got 44.6% for year over year. What about existing home sales? This is in thousands. Uh, the dark blue is 2019. The medium blue, I don't even know what to call that, is 2020. And then the very light blue would be this year, 2021. You can see last year in the summer where we started to have that home sale surge. Um, and then if you look in, oh, I guess January this year, we still did better than the other two years this year. So our sales are still beating out the other months, except May. We did see a slight decline, but when we get to Orlando, you'll see how in June it kind of went up again. All right, new home sales. New home sales. Let me tell you, these new home builders are doing very well right now. They have been kicking butt when it comes to home sales. And if you look at this year, 
alone with the light blue, they're doing much better than they were the last two years. How about housing inventory? We looked at buyer traffic last month in the market report, and it's still, we've got some states now that are looking pretty stable. We've got some strong and very strong. That's pretty much the entire United States. Like I said, I think Delaware, and it's still there, is still like the lighter, lighter blue. But every other state, very strong buyer traffic. But then what happens when we go to the seller traffic? Ah, right? Not that great. So um, unless you're in North Dakota, that state's looking pretty good. That's bit strong. And then you've got some more states that are looking stable. So there are states from last month that weren't very strong that now are here highlighted. That's good news if the seller traffic is starting to get better. If we're starting to see more states get highlighted. And look at Florida. That is actually good for us. That's getting better. So yay for Florida. Hopefully next month we'll see even more. Uh, months inventory of homes for the last um, 12 months. If you're starting from last June and coming up to this May is basically what you're looking at. Just kind of shows you the inventory of homes. Last year we actually had more inventory than we are right now, but it is slowly starting to creep up and I think that's good. Uh, new home inventory, again, new, inv new home inventory is still doing good. For the last 12 months, they're actually increasing every month, so that's looking good, except March they had a little bit of a dip for their home inventory. Interest rates. We always got to talk about interest rates, right? Still good. I mean, I have no bad news to share yet. Uh, third quarter, they're still averaging 3.17%. Um, in fact, they're not even projecting 3.57% until the second quarter of next year of 2022. So great. I mean, this is excellent news. Here's just a graph. If you're visual, I'm very visual. I love graphs. If I'm looking at data, I always try to create graphs so I can see visually what's going on with the data. Um, but if you look here, this is what's been historically happening in the dark blue. What is projected is in the light blue. And yeah, you can see the projection is that it's going to start to slowly increase. But again, slowly. Um, things can change, but right now that's the projection. Here's your average FICO scores for closed purchase loans. So these are loans that have already closed. You can see that the average uh, FICO score for a conventional loan is 759 and for an FHA would be 650 or 679. All right, now let's get to our update. This is the fun part. This is the Orlando. See, I told you I was going to try not to make this as, as long as maybe last time. So Orlando sales, let's talk about that. In the blue, again, that's 2020. And in the orange, that is this year, 2021. Now, with sales, notice when we were starting with March, and I'm going to use my cursor if I can do that right here. So in March, we started to see a decline in our sales, right? April and even May, we saw more of a decline. Then look at June. And this is typical. In the summer, we tend to have more buyers, more homes selling, because that's a good time for people to move, especially if you have a family. It's a good time to move before school starts, right? Wait till school ends. So we are starting to see an increase again in sales, but we also, and I will tell you this, saw an increase in inventory here in Orlando. More homes were on the market in June than in May. Again, good news. What about the, your average sale price? Now, if you remember last month, if you watched last month, I talked about April and May. In May, and it's very hard to see because it's so slight, but in May, we saw a slight decline in the average sale price. And then June comes along and the price just kind of beat every month for this year. So our average sale price in Orlando has gone up since the beginning of the year. Now we've seen slight increases, but this has been the biggest increase. And I'm excited and kind of anxiously waiting to see what July will bring us. But that is basically what is happening around here. Um, don't forget, we have our summer buyer and seller guides for 2021. They kind of go over just give you kind of some input. If you're a buyer, what are some key strategies for a buyer? What about if you're a seller, how to prepare your home and what to expect when you're selling your home? And if you're an experienced and seasoned buyer or seller, you might not need them, but just wanted to offer them. They're free. If you ever have any questions, please feel free to call us. You've got our number right here. And you also have our website, lahanhometeam.com. See you guys next month.